true. I can remember, I know I'm just going to talk, hold on. I can remember sleeping in the halls when Jenna first got sick. And, you know, you don't want to leave their side because at first they said she wasn't going to live through the night. So we did stay and sleep in just a chair for three nights. And then they offered the Ronald McDonald House. Best place. Um, amazing people. They offer so much. And it's just an experience that you don't want to have to go through. But to be there with them, it was pretty good. Um, sadly, my daughter passed away in 2017, so I don't go to the house, um, you know, and stay there. But I do like to volunteer and do speeches, and because they mean so much to me um, and to our family, to be able to keep my kids, you know, with me to visit, so I don't have didn't have to drive an hour to go home to go see them. Um, so that's my story. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shelly Bagan, and my story is completely opposite of yours. Um, I'm here with my son, Austin, who's in the back. But, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You'll, you'll get to hear from him later. Our, our story, like I said, is completely different. Um, he, Austin was 22, and we had, he had just graduated from high state. Go Bucks. Um, two weeks before our accident but he we were on a vacation we were in Florida on a vacation and vacation house you know and we're in St. George Island which is on the Gulf side um, just a freak and I know people say that it's a freak accident but he dove into the water into a wave and he's a swimmer he swam for high school he knows how to swim but dove into a wave and hit the bottom and broke his neck and he's laying face down in the water, conscious, you know, and had we not seen it, by the grace of God, I'm watching a 22 year old you know, jump in the water. But we saw it and he, we, you know, pulled him out and he was life flighted to Tallahassee Memorial. I had no idea where Tallahassee was, didn't know anything about Florida State. But we had no idea. So our story started with the smallest house in Florida at the Tallahassee Ronald McDonald. And I don't know if anyone's here from there, but that changed our lives. We were there for two and a half weeks while he was fully ventilated uh, in neuro ICU. And like you said, the first night we slept on the chair because we didn't know what we were. We didn't even pack a bag. I think in my mind, he was going to be OK, and we're going to go to Tallahassee, and then we're going to go back to our beach house. <laughs> Um, so I didn't even have a toothbrush. I had nothing. And like I said, Ohio, like the Tallahassee Memorial graciously said, why don't you look into going to the Ronald McDonald House? He was 22 at the time, but because it was part of Florida State College and Florida State had just gotten out, they graciously said, you know, we take college age kids and since he just got out of college, we'll let him come. So we went there for two and a half weeks. Um, had to go somewhere once he got a, out of intensive care, and we could not come to back to Ohio because there was no hospital in Ohio that could take a ventilator in a rehab. So we had nowhere to go. They wanted us to go to Atlanta. Atlanta's eight hours from, we live in Lima, Ohio. And so they flew him on a jet to Chicago. And so my shout out to all my Chicago houses. We were in three houses in Chicago. So it's two and a half weeks in Tallahassee. Then we went to a rehab facility. So we were at the Loyola um, Memorial, the Loyola House for, I had to write it down because I couldn't remember. <laughs> for two and, or for uh, six weeks, we were at the Loyola House in Chicago. And then we went to downtown Chicago. Then we were in the uh, Hyde Park House for six weeks. And then we were at the downtown, the downtown, the big, um, Ronald McDonald House, which is part of Loyola, but he could not get into that because he was too old because of the 21 age requirement. But we were grandfathered in because of Tallahassee, which was a blessing. So we had to wait and we again slept wherever we could sleep and then we were admitted into the, the one floor of downtown Chicago is called RIC Place, which is the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago. They have one floor 
of the Chicago house. So we got into that. And we were there for, till November 18th, so we were there for like three months. Whenever the elevator would open on the, our key only let us get onto the RIC place floor, which was very stale, like a true hotel. But when the doors would open, like on the fourth floor for the Ronald McDonald house, and you could see like gumdrops and stuff on the, we were so <laughs> jealous, because it was like, I want to be there. <laughs> but it was uh, just such a blessing to be part of all four of those houses. Thank you. We're uh, fortunate today to have two outstanding social workers from Nationwide Children's Hospital. Can I ask you guys to introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about um, what department you work in and uh, how many families stay with us, average length of stay, all that good stuff. My name is Sheree Keys. I'm one of the social workers for the Center for Colorectal and Pelvic Reconstruction at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Um, most of our families stay at the Ronald McDonald House from across the country and around the world. They're staying there for one to two weeks sometimes at a time. Uh, sometimes they're staying there for months at a time. Um, one of the things that the Ronald McDonald House helps me to do and our other social worker and our child life specialist to do is actually facilitate support groups for our families. So I am most thankful for Vicki and for Darla and their team because they have very much helped me improve um, the patient and family experience. So um, our population is mainly GI disorders, so they're coming from across the United States. Morning, um, or afternoon, sorry. <laughs> Still in the morning. Um, my name is Jose Cruz. I'm a uh, social worker within the uh, Comprehensive Pediatric Feeding Program uh, at Nationwide Children's. I uh, joined the team, but have been in several other uh, clinics and services within Children's Hospital uh, for the past 10 years. So. Um, we've been working and work closely with the house and uh, the managers there and the staff uh, uh, throughout my time with Children's Hospital and uh, just amazed with their ability to embrace the, the families that come in uh, for many different reasons. So uh, with the feeding program, uh, we are one of two intensive uh, feeding in program in Ohio. So it's uh, a well sought after program throughout the U.S. And so uh, families are coming from neighboring states. Uh, we actually had uh, a family fly in uh, from Texas just recently uh, as they heard that we are uh, providing this uh, specialized care uh, for kids with feeding difficulties. Uh, so the average length of stay for our intensive feeding uh, patients uh, typically would be between six to uh, nine weeks. And so uh, the house has been certainly valuable in their partnership and in collaboration because it allows the, the team to, to be able to uh, provide the actual care that the, the families need without having to worry about where are we gonna stay? How can we afford this? What are we gonna eat? And, um, and so those are things, the laundry, and of course all the other amenities uh, that, that is offered there. Uh, sometimes I get jealous when, when they uh, come in and talk about the activities uh, that had occurred the night prior. And uh, uh, of course as a social worker, uh, you wish to be involved in that a little bit more, but uh, certainly I'm blessed to be a part of connecting uh, the families to the important resources because without the house, uh, we certainly cannot uh, uh, help the families for the very reason why they are here uh, medically to address uh, whatever their child uh, needs. Thank you. Uh, back to family members questions. Um, two, what, what would you have done if Ronald McDonald House was not an option? And secondly, 
uh, how might the course of your child's treatment, how might it have been different if you could not have stayed close by? Jenna was very complex and had a lot of issues. Um, I know if I would have went home an hour away and they would call, I couldn't get there. But being able to stay at the house right across the street, you know, I'd have to get there, make decisions that only the parent could make, that the doctors and nurses can't make. It's very important. You have to, you know, be there to answer the questions and be there for your child, even if she would wake up and was crying in pain. She didn't talk, but if she would cry in pain, you know, just to get over and settle her down and just to be with her. Um, yeah, to, to elaborate on that exactly, we would have, what would we have done that our first bout in Tallahassee, I would have slept on the, in the waiting room because they had a neurointensive care little lounge and many people did sleep there whose parents were in the neurointensive care. I felt kind of guilty a little bit that I was offered the option to go to the Ronald McDonald House, which was right down the street, because I could go and take a shower, and I felt bad for these other people who couldn't because they you know, didn't have a child. Um, but we would have for sure slept on the chair, because I had to be there too, because I had no option. We were in Florida, I live in Ohio. Same thing too, to go to California, California. <laughs> go to Chicago. When we went to Chicago, I had a sister who lived like an hour away, so I suppose I might have gone there, but I probably would have stayed in his room anyways, because that's what you do when it's your child. I don't care if he's a year old or he's 22 years old, he's still your child. And I don't think we ever were not with him a single day. Somebody, either my husband or I, were always there. So. We truly were blessed to be able to be part of the Ronald McDonald House, for sure. Awesome, thank you. Uh, quick, another quick question for social workers. What's the impact that Ronald McDonald House has on the way you're able to treat patients and to do your job? Um, so the Center for Colorectal and Public Reconstruction has a um, one week program per month it's for children with bowel and bladder incontinence. So these families come from around the world, the United States, and their goal is for their child to be socially continent. And so during that week, um, the Ronald McDonald House allows myself and the other social worker the opportunity to provide essentially group counseling. So we do that on a Friday and on a Monday. So we provide two, they allow us <laughs> to provide two opportunities for group counseling. And I think that's very beneficial for our families who might not otherwise be open to counseling, who might be limited um, in resources or access to counselors. And it allows families to bond with each other. So, um, I think that's something that's very important to us and important to our team. And I think when our families leave the house after that week, they feel empowered um, by the strength that they've pulled from others. So for our pediatric uh, feeding program, as I had mentioned earlier, we are one of two uh, that offer the intensive feeding program that they're basically, the families are here Monday to Friday uh, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So uh, with that, uh, with families coming from out of state and certainly within uh, the, the region, um, it allows us to be able to work with them without having to worry about going home. Uh, and so the work, there's a lot of work uh, that certainly allows us uh, in a multidisciplinary team uh, that uh, without the house uh, would make things difficult. Uh, there are certainly outpatient services, alternatives for such, uh, but uh, the, the successes of that, of course, vary. And um, with the intensive feeding program, it really allows us to uh, work closely with the families 
uh, and caretakers to addressing the, the, the very foundation of uh, the, the feeding issues that uh, the child presents with. And so uh, I think um, the very essence of the house being available uh, allows our, our team to do the great work uh, that they do uh, in addressing, again, the, the s specific and specialized uh, issues regarding to feeding that families would have to go in different, uh, different states for. Uh, Alan's here from Austin, apparently a rock star. Uh, not apparently, definitely. So Austin, I have two questions for you. Uh, one is, what did it mean for you to have your family close by while you were in the hospital? And secondly, what did it mean to know that they were being taken care of while you were in the hospital? Uh, first off, I just want to thank all you guys for what you do. I mean, you guys have such a positive influence on families during such a uh, difficult time, as you guys have heard, obviously, from many people's experience. But for me, it was, you know, the first two weeks after my injury, I don't really remember much. But what I always do remember, like my mom said, is that someone was always there. And I couldn't talk at that time so I had to mount everything, but I just always knew that I had someone by me. And I think eventually after I got out of the drug state and my mind came back and I was back to me, I remember, you know, like asking or hearing where they were staying and, you know, they would say the Ronald McDonald and I wasn't that familiar with your guys' organization before my injuries, but I knew it was for the kids and I, thought, well, I gotta be over the age. I, mean, <laughs> I just graduated college. How are you guys staying at the Ronald McDonald House? So I got to hear kind of their story and how, you know, you guys allowed them to come to the house even though I was over age and how that carried over and you guys grandfathered them in. And what that meant to me as a patient, you know, Having my family there, they would have, whether you guys would have been able to provide or not, I know they would have been there and stayed in that room with me every night. But to know that they could get away from what I was going through, to just go back to what you guys have, which is kind of like a community, it's a family. Uh, I mean, you guys have something where they could escape for a bit, go back to the Ronald McDonald house take a shower, have a meal, you know, talk to other families that are going through similar stuff. And it kind of gave me, you know, more peace and uh, allowed me to go through the process a little bit smoother to know that my parents and my family and siblings, because I don't know, this is my sister right here. <laughs> so to know that they were, you know, taken care of and Again, it allowed me to focus on my therapy and focus on what I need to do. But then, again, to know that they were, you know, being cared for and just really appreciate what you guys do. Thank you, Okay, I got three questions for family. How do you remember three questions? I read them. So. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so we'll do our best, right? So, uh, what did it mean to you to meet other families? So, this is more about the community community thing uh, Austin mentioned. Uh, in addition to the services provided by staff and volunteers, uh, you're in a community, whether it be three other families or 130 other families. Um, what did it mean to you to meet other families going through similar experiences? What things were important to you during your stay? And what can we do to improve our services? Because we're great, but we got to keep on getting better. You know, I, I think of the complexity of healthcare, the programs you guys work in didn't exist 10 years ago. So, so 
When I started at Children's Hospital, we had 1,600 employees and there's almost 13,000 today. So the kids used to come from local and now they're coming from all over the world and with, with problems and issues that were unforeseeable 25 years ago. So uh, what a challenge to, to the houses as well as uh, to, to the uh, staff of the hospital. So that's why the what can we do to improve our services is an important question because n new and more innovative ways of taking care of families um, are necessary. Okay, so I'm going to repeat again because I, I, yeah, so okay, I'll do one at a time. What do you mean, this is the community question, what did it mean to you to meet other families going through similar experiences? I remember when Jenna first got sick, we were at the hospital and you would talk to the families at the hospital and you think that you have it so bad and then you talk to a family who has it much worse. They're going through cancer, they're going through, you know, my child is not gonna live through the night. It's just really, really hard. Um, but you make friends. I mean, I have, I have friends now that I still talk to. We still do things together. Um, it's just a big family. And through their house, they have activities you do, whether it be bingo or coloring or crafts or, you know, just to get everyone involved together, just to take your mind off of things for a while and to be able to bring your kids to do the activities, to include your kids, because that's the hardest thing is to have babies at home. Mine was 10 and 11, but they're still, I have 20 year old, they're still my babies. But babies at home and not be able to see them, but to be able to bring them to the house, to be involved and to get to see them and love on them means a lot. I get, my story doesn't really, I didn't really, wasn't part of the community because our kids were so much older. My He's the third young, you know, we had older kids who went back to Ohio because they had jobs. So we didn't really, wasn't part of the community because I didn't have time. I mean, we were always with him. And so it was more being, being able to have a shower and have breakfast and have a meal. And, and we, I got a lot out of the, the people who worked at the house who gave me support, but I didn't really, was never there when the other families were ever there because I would come back late. What uh, things were most important to you during, during your stay? I, I mentioned it was most important was being able to have my children there with me and to be able to spend time with them because they need their mommy and their daddy too. Um, having a hot shower and 10 minutes to like sit and read a book or pray or just have somewhere I could hide and, and get away. Um, yeah, it, it, and you're right, my, my kids or my husband, I mean, we always had someone coming and going. So it was just, they were so, you could always have somebody stay with you. So what, what is it we could do to improve our services? <laughs> Diet Mountain Dew would be good. <laughs> they had too good of food. <laughs> they always had Panera bread, they had fattening stuff, and we <laughs> had good coffee. Um, I will say, because I've talked, I've told you know, the Columbus house, because I know you guys don't do this, but the Tallahassee house was so small and it was a mansion um, that was donated to the house, or to the Ronald McDonough's, but they had jobs, I had a job. Like every week I had, you, you, they rotated a job list. So I had to sweep the floor one time. And one time our job was to sweep off the uh, front porch, because the, I don't forget what kind of trees those are that leave all the leaves, but we had to sweep the front porch every day. and. As weird as that is, it was kind of nice because I had a purpose. I had to sweep the floor every day. Um, at least, you know, and so I think that's a great idea. I don't know if some of your other houses, it gives you ownership. It kind of made me have a purpose, like I had to do something. Besides taking care of Austin, I had, to, I had a job. I had to do it. 
Awesome. Okay, last question for all, all panelists. What, what is something you would like the staff around the dental house to know? You all know. <laughs> I don't even know if I need to say anything. But it's, for 20 years, was my home away from home. And it was the best home away from home that I could have ever asked for. The Dayton house and the Columbus house. There wasn't a day that went by that I didn't hear, hey, Lori, how's Jenna doing today? Oh, she's having a bad day. And the hugs immediately came out. Tissues immediately came out. Because they just are always there for you. Whatever you need, emotional support, toothbrushes, toothpaste, I mean, anything. The little things just add up. It's just a, it's a big deal. The Ronald McDonald House is a big deal. Um, I guess I, I am truly thankful that, truly, that they, those rules were bent at the very beginning because that changed our whole, you know, his whole injury outcome. Had we not been admitted to the Tallahassee Ronald McDonald House, I wouldn't have been grandfathered into the Chicago ones. And so, I'm, glad, I'm so thankful they bent the rule just a tiny bit. Sometimes you might have to bend the rule. You know, like, you got to be 21, but he was 22. But that, that I'll always be thankful for Tallahassee for that. And last night, I guess I just want to say, Terry, you never know the impact you're going to have on a family or a situation, and you might not know it at the time.